Hey folks, yeah, welcome to another episode of Founders Connect. Here I have conversations with entrepreneurs, operators, and everybody in the tech ecosystem in Africa, actually. Um, this, today's conversation, I'm having it with Tommy Wa, the co-founder and CPO, Chief yes. Product Officer of Bycoins, now Heli Carrier. Yes. Right? <laughs> I'm actually so excited that we're doing this interview now that you guys have done the renaming yeah. them before. But I'm really excited to meet you. Yeah, nice Thanks to meet so. you too. Also. Thanks for honoring this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've watched a couple of the interviews you've done and I like them. Ah, yeah, so that's good. I'm yeah. blushing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for staying to watch this video. My name is Pisit Timi. I'm very passionate about growing people and growing businesses. So everything I do is a reflection of that, including this YouTube channel. I create videos on entrepreneurship, life, marketing, and everything in between. My goal is that anybody who that watch any of my video is inspired and or motivated to get better in their life, in their business, or in their career. So I hope that as you watch this video, this conversation, that it does that for you. If this is your first time on this channel, do me a favor. You probably hear all YouTubers beg, so I'll beg to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, there's a bell notification button there. If you click on it every single time I release a new video, you'll be one of the first people to know. And that's really cool, you know? And if this is not your first time, I say it all the time. I really appreciate you. I really love you. Thanks for being here. Now let's get right into the video. So I like to start my interviews with learning about the person, like okay. their background, like did you drop from the sky? <laughs> well, what was growing up like for you? Schools that you went to? Anything, any stories you can give us about your background? So. Okay, sure. Um, so, well, I was born in Nigeria. So, uh, I grew up mostly in Lagos. Uh, and I went to school, secondary school, in F4 secondary school. Ikeja, okay. Yeah. So, I used to do that daily commute from Agege, where we used to live, um, to Ikeja um, every weekday. Yeah. Uh, I guess gr growing up was fun. Um, standard, I guess, like middle class family. Um, school was fun for some parts of it, <laughs> <laughs> but but there was there were also very uh, I guess like disappointing elements, yeah. right? So uh, things just like I guess things like uh, how much you're actually able to learn from like right. existing in school, right? And like how much your curiosity is encouraged and things along those lines, yeah. So I guess like that was cool um, with that. Uh, I had a few friends, yeah, but not too many. Yeah, I was mostly like a bookworm, which is somewhat different from how I am today. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm not super social, but I am a bit more, a bit less reserved, I suppose. How did that happen? Um, so I, I think like going to college in the US probably All like right. um, did change me a bit. So uh, I got to interact with a lot of people and um, people from like diverse cultures and things along those lines. Um, and I guess I got to discover more people who aligned more with the kind of things I was interested in and like willing to like talk to people about. Um, so I guess like that was that was pretty good. Um, but, but yeah, I think I think that's that's what growing up was like. Amazing. So yeah. what did you study? Um, I studied computer science actually. Um, so I went to school in Tennessee in the US. Um, I spent four years there and then I went to work at Microsoft for about four years. Yeah. So I, I was actually not supposed to go to college to study computer science. Oh, I supposed yeah. to go? Um, I was going. To, I told them I was going to college to study physics, but I had no, I had <laughs> told no, them. I had no clue what I was going to college to do. Um, I just knew I liked math, and I was going to figure it out. Um, and then my in my first semester um, in in college, I had a bunch of friends who started learning programming and were taking computer mm. science classes and I started looking into like what they were doing and it sounded pretty interesting <laughs> <laughs> and I was like oh, okay I'll sit in on your classes I'll audit them um, and then like the second semester I realized I was changing my majors and things <laughs> along those lines yeah so so that, that was I guess my a slightly atypical journey but not too unconventional. Amazing yeah. how did university in the in the US happen because um, when you spoke about your background so you guys even in Agege mm -hmm. and from a medical family so did mm -hmm. you get a scholarship or how did yeah, that happen? Yeah, yes yes I, I did get a scholarship to go to school in the US, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's one of the things I'm generally, I guess, passionate about, right? I, I do think like things like scholarship are like very strong things that we do to, um, I guess, excite neurons that are generally or otherwise like not as fortunate, right? Mm. Um, so, so yeah, I, like I would never have gone to school in the US if I didn't get a scholarship, yeah. Um, but, but, but that was good. I, I think, I, I always ask this question to people sometimes, which is like, what, what is one thing about your life you live constant if you had the chance to redo it, right? And like for me, it's like, I think going to school in the US is probably like one of the things I would live constant in my life. Mm. Um, so, so that was exciting. That's yeah. actually a very good question. I don't think I've ever talked about it, <laughs> but I promised myself I'm going to actually ask myself that question. <laughs> Can you please repeat it so that everybody hears it? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so if you had to redo your life over again, 
what is the one thing you will keep constant about your, during your life? Yeah. So Absolutely. I guess it is sort of I'm, like I'm going to steal that, that question. <laughs> because I mean, in these interviews, I usually ask people if you're going to do life or career all over again, what would you change? Mm -hmm. But I've never thought about what, what would, would you, you do? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like you feel like it's so fundamental to like defining like the experience of who you became that mm -hmm. like you really want to like keep it and like you feel very strongly attached to it. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. So how did Microsoft happen? Um, oh yeah, so, so I was in school in, um, in Tennessee, right? It's a small school, like, we, we didn't have a lot of people who used to go get, like, jobs at, like, you know, big companies, yeah. But I had, like, a bunch of friends who are very resilient, right? And, like, we just keep going and, like, applying and, like, disturbing recruiters on LinkedIn and whatnot. Um, so I got an internship there from just, like, disturbing people and getting a chance to do an interview and things along those lines. Um, and it's pretty interesting because w one of the things with, I guess, even up to now, like you sort of have with like interview processes when you are is um, the one like what you're teaching in the classroom is somewhat like divergent from like what they ask you, <laughs> which is also divergent from like what you end up doing at work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, so so like it did like take quite a bit of effort, like just r racing through like some different set of curriculum to figure out how to get into like um, one of the big tech companies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did I did work at Microsoft as an intern and then like I came back as a full timer. Um, worked with Azure, um, so like Microsoft was selling this big data solution for businesses. Um, so so I worked with that for a bit, and then worked on the HoloLens experience system. Um, and the HoloLens experience system was essentially building first-party apps for um, the HoloLens. So by first-party apps, it means like apps built by Microsoft itself. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so so the, so that was exciting. I was there for a year and a year and a half, and then like. Um, Bycoins found me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us how Bycoins found you and yeah. why you left Microsoft and left the US and came back. For yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I guess how, how did that go about? So, okay, so so at some point, I, I I first heard about crypto actually in 2012, right? I was in. That was very early. Yeah, yeah, that was early. Yeah. You must but, be rich now. No, I am not rich, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so I am like the classic story of I found out about um this guy in 2012. I actually found out about it on Twitter, right? There was this person who was always tweeting about it, and like I had no clue what it was about, right? So like I had I asked a bunch of people like what's this thing about? Like nobody had any time for me. So it was just like one of those things you stumble across on the internet, mm. right? Because I, in 2012 I used to spend a ridiculous amount of time on Reddit as an example. <laughs> yeah, very unhealthy. <laughs> um, so, so that was sort of like my first foray into crypto. Um, and then I sort of did not kick that back again until like 2016, right? right? So by then, I had taken like a bunch of computer science courses. I had read like a whole bunch of like books around capitalism and economics. So like I had like a much better framework for like thinking about money, right? And thinking about mm. like what it was that Bitcoin was about. Right. Um, and so like I started like dabbling into the space a bit, right? Um, and then, then I used to like tweet about it a lot and get <laughs> as many people as possible to like get interested. Um, and then I think just about that point in 2017, the summer of 2017 or thereabouts, right? So I think that's like June or so. Um, Timmy, who is my co-founder, started like thinking about it also. So so the, so the experience that used to actually happen then was, um, so they want to buy like say like an iPhone, right? I want to buy something from the US. Um, and like they want to send me crypto, they want to send me Bitcoin as a way of like fixing right. that problem, right? Um, but then they needed to buy Bitcoin. And like the experience for buying Bitcoin then was local Bitcoins, which was just yeah. terrible. Like, like when I say terrible, I mean like terrible. Like think <laughs> craziest, but worse. <laughs> yeah. And so um, so then, right, like um, to me and I would talk, right, and it would be like, oh, like how hard can you be to like build like a solution to this, right? Like just like we are both like, tech guys right yeah. and you think oh like yeah tech solves everything and, like all of that <laughs> naivety yeah, so, <laughs> naivety <laughs> no really very naive right so so we decided like oh like let's start building this right but like i wasn't very involved right mm. so timmy and Uri started like building it. they built the first version which was bitcoin africa right and I, I guess i was just more so on the side as like an advisor and like talking to them and thinking through the whole thing with them um, and then, like over time, like it started seeming more serious, right? And like they also started realizing, like, oh yeah, this is like a side thing. project. <laughs> yeah, this is like, a, oh, we are helping people like buy things and like d different things like that. And um, when you build something, right, you can't just like build it and say, oh, we're going mm. to sleep, right? Like then you ask somebody and they are like, oh. Uh, I don't like this thing that you've done, or oh, like the fees are too much, or this and that, right? And so you start spending even more time, like yeah. building it more, right? And so at that point, it sort of very strongly coincided with like one of the things I had been thinking about, right? Because and for me, I, I guess like the the mission at that point was there is this there seemed at least to be a significant like wealth creation opportunity with crypto, right? And like mm. a significant like 
reorganization of the global financial infra. And in my head at that point, like Nigeria and like a lot of countries in Africa were like significantly behind, right? So in my head, it's like, oh, well, this seems like a good opportunity for me to apply myself, right? And like, these are people who are like super serious about like solving this problem, right? Like, let's, let's go do it. Um, and I guess, I, so at the point, at that point, I started thinking like, okay, like this is probably something that required like a much fuller full-time commitment. Right. Yeah, so, but then I, I, did, I had no clue it would be as difficult as <laughs> <laughs> my experience over the last three years. Like, it's like, if there's one you can go back to like redo and like remove, you'll be like, no, just start back when <laughs> leave it alone. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, that's sort of like how uh, I guess like we got started, right? Um, and like since then, like we've just been like churning and like building and like working very hard. And like it. really <laughs> building a lot of things. It's like you, you are not just building like the main buy coins that you started. Mm -hmm. You guys have built buy coins pro. You guys have built send cash. Mm -hmm. There's send cash pay. There's mm -hmm. RAM that's like. Yeah. It's like people have like there's, there's a bunch of people in Bitcoin's office that are just thinking of oh this hasn't been built yet you know what <laughs> you two can start building it and the investing is being done like give yeah. us more insight how 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 are you guys doing it yeah, yeah it makes sense so so um yeah they they. they, they so I guess there, there are a couple of things there for like how we think through that, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So so the first thing is it it's very clear in our heads, right? And like it's very clear in my head that crypto is going to like significantly change global financial infrastructure, right? Yeah. Like there's sort of like no question about is it. it. What's, what's your evidence for that? Um. So so I guess like there is one theoretical evidence and like one is like the practical evidence. The theoretical evidence is that with Bitcoin we sort of literally solve like a problem that like had not been solved in computer science, right? Like it's literally like a classic computer science problem. Like how do you get people um, who don't really know each other to like coordinate on like the truth or like the state of things, right? And like as long as they are rational actors, they can't figure out a way to coordinate. So like that's sort of like the starting thing yeah. that like Satoshi solves. Um, and then the second thing, I guess, is like the practical evidence, right? Which is just the, the, the manner in which like we're able to like move money across borders today is just phenomenal right um and there are like a bunch of ways of like thinking about this right so so one is if, you, if you, so if you think about like what has sort of happened like over like the last two decades right like there, there are a bunch of things to compare with mm -hmm. right like so the biggest probably like the biggest influence and the biggest force right over the last two decades has been the internet right now so sort of like imagine a world in which like Nigerians could not use WhatsApp. No, no, no. A world in which Nigerians could not send emails, right? Um, and like you needed to do, you needed to prove that you are a US citizen to send emails, right? Yeah. Like that's just like preposterous, right? And like that's actually what the banking infrastructure is today, right? Okay. We are essentially, right? Like the US has like a very strong dominance for us, right? And like this stuff like strongly gets kept, right? You can't get like access to US dollars easily. You can't send money for your child's tuition except you explain from now till tomorrow. Like that's not <laughs> what sending an email is, right? Yeah. Like you just like send an email, right? And like the world is, a significantly more con connected world, a more communicative world, right? A much stronger world because we're able to do that, right? Um, and like what is happening there is like we're saying we are removing the geographical borders to knowledge transfer, right. right? Now, when you remove the geographical borders to wealth transfer and like income transfer, right, and things like that, like you significantly change things, right? So. Even like interesting things like, oh, we have software engineers here, right? Or you have like graphic designers here who want to get employed by like a US company or a UK yeah. company. Like it becomes so hard. much more seamless. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. And like things like say, oh, um, I want to send money back home to my family, right? I don't have to like go to Western Union and queue, right? And like all sorts of different things like that. Like uh, by the time you start getting those experiences to like 10, 15 minute experiences, like you significantly change things, right? And like that's just like one dimension and like one application, right? So I think like it's it's very clear in my head that like the, the end result of like what we end up having, right? Is almost, imagine we had a global currency that like everyone was using to transact, right? And like there's just so much more efficiency, right? So like if somebody was, if somebody couldn't afford to pay, pay their school fees, right, and they wanted to raise money, right, you are not, you are no longer restricted to like the people you're asking for funds in your geographical mm. area. Now, literally anybody, anybody in the world, in the world is can. a 15 minute donation away from you, right? Mm. Oh man, like it's just like the set of things we are beginning to try out today, right? Like it's like, oh, we had email in 2008, right? Or we had like Skype in like 2000 or something, right? Which is very different from like the WhatsApp experience today, right? Like yeah. the WhatsApp experience today is like, we have like group chats and this and that and like they significantly transform life. Yeah. yeah. Um. So so I, so I think like uh, we we're increasingly like getting to that point, right? And like the the, the f reason we don't really have much of that today is that the user experience around crypto is still very broken, right? right. So we are still at a point where, um, uh, my grandma, my grandma, 
we would not necessarily like want to use Bitcoin, right? Because there is like, oh, what's this nonsense about, right? And like, I have to explain and like, tell them about fraud and tell them about, oh my God, I'm bored already, <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and so like, what we sort of like need to fix is like, the onboarding experience needs to be like WhatsApp, right? right. Where, oh, um, the, like, there is very little friction to like getting people to use it, right? Or like people are using it without knowing without that they're using that. it. Exactly, yeah. right? So they don't have to interface they with don't it have to, to actually leverage yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, right? So, so think are like, they're just like a whole bunch of things that like people do with their smartphones that they're using all sorts of more complicated things, behind yeah. the scenes, but they have zero clue about, right? Yeah. And like for us, right, like we are not at the finish line. We're nowhere, nowhere near the finish line. So like the experience is very strongly integrated, right? We're like, you're using crypto for like the things you want to do with your life without even necessarily recognizing that you're doing that, right? So I guess like that's a, 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 a long route to like the original question, right? But like, I guess that, that's just like one thing around like how I think about that. Um, and, and then the next thing is like, okay, like how we then approach like good yeah, this, right? Exactly. Um, and like one, we spend a really close amount of time talking to users, right? So we, we say, oh, like why, we, we try to understand like, okay, what What's the pain point between like what you're trying to achieve and what we think crypto should do for you, right? And like for us, it's like whatever needs to be done to build that, like okay. sort of needs to be done, right? right. Um, and it just so happens that like building products and building features and very rapid iteration, right, is very critical to doing that, right? Mm. Um, and it, to a certain degree, right, like there's just like a whole pipeline of things that we think should be done, right? <laughs> and we're like, oh, like we do want a lot more people to like get into this space and do that, right? But we also think it's our responsibility, right, like because we think of ourselves somewhat as custodians to like build these things very rapidly and like demonstrate to people like what these things can do, right, and like encourage a lot more people to like get involved in this space, right? Um, so so that's like a, a signal way in like in which we think about it right and like they're just like a whole bunch of other things around being like moving really fast right that like is very very big for us right um like there, there's actually like a blog post that I, I shared with um my coworkers like a few weeks back right which talks about like moving fast and like just the importance of it and now like even with something like writing right like by like writing a lot right is how you get faster and like by writing a lot is how yeah. you I have higher quality writing and things along those lines, right? And for us, right, like actually like product building rapidly, right? And product building um very much centered around like the problems that like people are experiencing um is essentially like how we build and how we move much further in like what it is that like we think is useful for the space. Yeah. Um so so I guess like those are like just like some two, three yeah. ways in which so, you think about that. I mean each of the things that you guys are building are basically standalone products, mm -hmm. right? So how do you do Bycoins Pro and send cash P and send cash without losing focus on Bycoins or without losing focus on this? Because it's still the same team mm -hmm. that are building all of it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, it's not like you're hiring new engineers and say, we have this idea, oh yeah, I'm hiring these four people, come and focus on this. Mm -hmm. Everybody's still doing all of like, so how are you able to sort of balance it out to make sure that no product is suffering because mm -hmm. we are trying to build fast and iterate fast? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. So the first thing I should actually say is that we do actually suffer that problem, right? Um, it's just like, how can we figure out how to like minimize how much we suffer that problem, right? right? Yeah, so so I guess like there's sort of a, a, a couple of things, right? So, so one is, at least for me, one of the things I actually try a lot more to do right now is move my weeks across like what I spend more time on, right? So move right your now, weeks. Yeah, my weeks, right? So like maybe this week, like I'm spending a lot of time like thinking about buy coins and next week is like buy coins pro and then next week is send cash, right? right. Um, and so like that, like, rotating around it like it's very useful right mm -hmm. one of the things we've also actually like found an equilibrium around is um i can sort of like trust my co-founders to like focus on other things while i am focusing on one thing right? right from like a product perspective so as an example is that um when so right now right like i'm very strongly focused on like send cash and like we were doing this thing called send cash p2p right and like how we sort of like can figure that out um i'm actually really excited about that um and then like to me right now is very strongly focused on send cash pay right and i know that like we when we just like have conversations and write things where it's like okay like we have strong alignment on like what the vision is right and i can trust that okay like i might disagree about some things that he might decide on doing right with send cash pay but like with 95 percent of it yeah, yeah yeah like we're going to be aligned right so i almost don't even have to like care significantly about what's going on i just need mm. to maybe check on like the daily status updates right and like so we have like base camp which we use for like tracking everything that happens in the company right so we're very like writing oriented company right so pretty much like anything you do any decision you make um 
how, how your blog, like anything like that. Like we encourage people to write it in a way where like all 50 of us can see it, right? Like we're like 41, 42. Um, and so like that helps you keep track of like what's going on very easily, right? And that helps you know like, okay, do I need to be pulled into something, right? right. So generally speaking, right? Like if Timmy is driving something, I probably don't have to worry about it much. And like maybe in two weeks time, I'll check on like, okay, how far is this really mm. gotten besides the daily updates? Um, but like if there's something I think, oh, I strongly disagree with, right? Or like I think, oh, they do need my input on, like I sort of like my chime in, right? Yeah. So I think like that's like a, a, an important way, yeah. Um, and then like there's just like the set of people that we also hire, like a, a lot of people on the team like really, really care and like are very strongly sold on like the mission, right? Um, and like what that ends up meaning is like you can increasingly like delegate, delegate things to people to like go worry about, right? And like not necessarily like worry about like the minuscule of things, right? Um, and so like maybe if um, Ira is thinking about say, like this new thing that we're building and like fully immersed and focused in it, she can know that, okay, like there are people who sort of sort out operations and finance for like right. these two three weeks that she has to like fully focus on that right and then we sort of like again resync and like reorganize and whatnot yeah so i think like that's very more so like how we do which is um how do you sort of figure out like load balancing across the three co-founders and load balancing across the entire team mm. right such so that like things like that happen yeah um increasingly we, we are trying to figure out slash experiment with like creating sub teams right so it gets to a point where like you start being too large that like regardless of how efficient everyone is you can't yes. function as one unit right and you do need the concept of like sub teams right so like an overarching goal but like sub teams are do things um and so like that, that's one of the things like we are increasingly experimenting with to i guess like figure out um but but yeah the, the problem is very real but like that's this is this has been like our approach around like load balancing and stuff like that that makes sense yeah. um would it be right to say one of the reasons why it's easy for all three of you to um, share the load is because you're all technical? Yes, actually. <laughs> so, 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 like, it, it, so it's, it's one of those things that is, like, starts out very serendipitously and, like, we end up in, like, this situation, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, but, yeah, like, so the fact that, like, all three of us are technical significantly, like, shapes the DNA of, like, the team, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, one is a big reason why we're very engineering first, right? So, like, on the one hand, right, when, when we think about, like, okay, a user has this problem, the first thing we think about is, brute force no brute force like how do we solve it right <laughs> but on the other hand is like a oh what is the common pattern around like this set of problems that we can use like an engineering mindset to like go knock out right, right. and like like even like so so interestingly like Everybody on like my support team right writes SQL right which is very close to like a programming language right was that was that like is this something that you made sure? Happened? Yes, actually, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And like, so, so it's one thing that, like, again, it's one of those things that, like, initially we have an intuition and like, okay, like this is probably useful, but like, it's probably like one of the best bets we've made, right? Mm. And, like, the reason it's one of the best bets we've made is, um, it's significant. It has significantly empowered like the customer support team, right? right. So like, it's not just that like they can, like a user reaches out and is like, oh, I have this complaint, and like they're like, oh, we're waiting for an engineer, right? Like for like probably eighty percent of situations, they can significantly like figure out the root cause of the problem right. by like looking at the data and like analyzing the situation and like deeply understanding it right and then like even if like it's something that requires an engineer they can literally break down the reason yeah. like that is so it's, it's sort of reducing the amount of time the engineers even have to spend yes yeah it reduces problems. the amount of time yeah and like it very it very quickly like solves users problems right because like again like we don't always want it so that like when users come out like we have to wait for like somebody who is stuck on some other feature that they're building right um i like that like, that's very good right so like things like that are like some of the things that have significantly shaped like the mindset right um and for us also it's whenever we encounter some problems like there are things that for people sometimes they are unintuitive as like how to go about solving it, right? But for us it's like very intuitive, like, oh, like yeah, like there's this clear like engineering <laughs> thing to do. Yeah. It does have its own its downsides actually, right? We are like sometimes I sort of describe us as like to, sometimes too engineering focused, right? Um because like all of us very strongly like care about like important like product experiences and like there are things that we should probably have like one person like spending a lot more time doing and like they're probably not spending that much more time doing. Yeah. And like we have to like rethink how to like force ourselves to do that. Right? And like things like, God, I hate fundraising, I don't want to invest And we are like, oh you have to like do some investor update operation and like yeah, that's your job. Sort of the audit. <laughs> I don't see anything about it. Yeah. Um so so the, so there's stuff like things along the signs that end up happening but like far and large right like it ends up i think being good right and like to the extent that we are are we unconscious of 
the biases and like our pre-inclinations, like we're able to like proactively like fix that, right? So, so, so I do like that. Yeah, that makes sense. When at the beginning of the interview, you said, if there's something you change, it will be don't do buy coin because <laughs> it's been very hard for the last four years. Tell us some of the ways that it has been super challenging. Ways <laughs> that, I mean, from the outside, we know that CBN has been hitting just the industry, right? Mm -hmm. But like, what are some of those, the ways that it's been hard that people do not necessarily see? That it's mm -hmm. not even a regulation thing. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so, so, so there, there, a, a whole bunch of things, right? So, so one surprisingly like challenging thing actually is iron. Right. Um, so iron has actually been very difficult for us, like through the years, right? And like there are a whole bunch of reasons why that's the case, right? So, so, so the first thing is, um, with, with crypto, you're sort of looking for engineers that sit at the intersection of like some two or three things, right? So, like yeah. you want engineers who understand the engineering and can like write code, right? Or um, like you want people who are because you are playing around with people's money are very conscious of like fraud and things along those lines um and then you want engineers who are very curious about learning because the face is a is a fast moving space mm -hmm. um and you end up needing to catch up with what's going on in the space and things along those lines uh so so you do have that again and then you want engineers who are able to communicate effectively right because we're a remote first team and engineers aren't always the most communicative people and things are like they can work independently um and like just finding like an intersection of like those well, two those three things. things even like two out of those three things is incredibly challenging right mm -hmm. and like that's not just even like engineering even like non-engineering who sometimes like having to hire for that like gets very super challenging um and if, we, we you actually like even though like on the surface it looks like it is a simple problem like it has like far-reaching consequences right so an example is like we have like these three or four things that we're working on right um to be able to like maintain that and improve it and like listen to feedback and like grow it you do need engineering talent and you do need like product management talent right and like if you are very slow at hiring right or like you can't get people to fill yeah. those things like those things are going to have like very broken experiences right and like you're going to then have an overworked team right and yeah. like that's going to like lead to born and lead to like them more likely to like write broken experiences and like all sorts of things like that right and like it's something that has actually happened from like the very start where uh, maybe in like the first one or two years we actively do think we are for instance still writing too much code right yeah. like there are things that for instance are like more big picture things that like we want to be able to focus on right and like that's not necessarily something like we have the luxury of right like when there's like that like strong challenge um so like that's been like one of the actually like big challenging things right um another thing is actually is like the fact that we have so many things that we're, that we're working on right <laughs> <laughs> like problem that you cost for yourself yeah, basically. Problem that we cost for ourselves. yes actually <laughs> um and like figuring out like how to like balance thinking about this and like share like a common story yeah. right and like focus on like the big picture right so so one one of the things for us right is we we like there a lot of us is always trying to like pull us in like different directions right um and like even just from like a product point of view not even not just even like regulation and like partners yeah. and whatnot right is like a there are a lot of things that we get very excited about like wanting to build right and mm -hmm. like oh like this was the existing space and like to me it's like oh like we should build it and like no we're not going to build this right <laughs> like no 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 we have to focus on this and then six months later like it doesn't exist and we're like okay fine we'll build it um and so like even being able to like ensure that we don't do too much of that mm -hmm. right um ends up being like critically important right so for instance like we had get cards right and it was increasingly like taking a lot of our time right and we're like okay like we need to rethink the strategy around this right where we want this to grow like we want to, we think like it makes sense like it doesn't make sense that you want to order on amazon you want to order on asos and like yeah. you can't do that right and like crypto can power the experience and from the end user it doesn't look like that's what's going on and like we can sort of like fix that and like that's why we build that um but but then it's like okay now this exists right like we can't we don't have all of that time to like spend growing it and marketing <laughs> it right and whatnot right it's like okay like how can we like rethink this from the ground up and think okay like this this isn't necessarily something we want to like primarily do but we still want it to exist right and like we converted it to an api product as an example for right. other people to integrate yeah so 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 being able to like think about like focusing that way like gets important um and then maybe like the last thing even around the team also is still like over the last year we've grown significantly mm. right um and that so so that has like problems that you read about in um, Jeff Bezos's <laughs> letters to shoulder, right? And like, it's happening to you and like two or three months later, you're like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's, what <he> <laughs> that's what's going on, right? And like, they're just like simple things like, oh, um, ensuring like 
the culture remains, right? Ensuring like people we are still fast moving, ensuring that communication is effective, ensuring that like there's good synergy, right? Ensuring like people will understand who is responsible for what. Like things like that get very complicated, right? Um and like I like to think about like a lot of these things from like a very I guess like almost like anthropological lens, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, a, oh, like well, why do we get into like this problem fundamentally as like a society, right? And it's like, a, yeah, yeah, because like you shouldn't have like more than like a small family <laughs> unit that interacts with the rest of the world, right? But all of a sudden, like we want like a forty-person team that like cares about ten cars and cares about bike lanes and cares about all these things, right? And like it's like okay, thinking about how to do all of these things properly, right? So where people truly feel a sense of ownership and like truly yeah. feel responsible. Um, and like all of these things, like still like balance out. So so I'll say like yeah, there's, there's a, like a, a lot of it is still like very much around like product building and like and structuring the team effectively. Yeah. Um. And, and like the, the the thing about these things is like they are not like there isn't always like a clear solution. Like there's a clear solution two years later, right? So like when you've made all the mistakes, you're like, oh my god, I was stupid. This is the obvious solution, <laughs> <laughs> right? But like in the moment, like it's very like complicated, right? Like and it's very difficult to realize when you're sort of like making the mistakes, right? So like being very like intentional about like catching some of those things, right? Is like like just super important, right? Yeah. Like I was talking to like Timmy and Ire recently where um like there was somebody on the team, right? Like they were they had been working on something, but they had sort of like eat the ceiling of what they were working on, right? Yeah. And like they had like empowered everybody else like to to be doing that, right? And like we had like just like a two three months lag in like realizing that that yeah. oh like we should have given them like a whole different oh, thing to work on right like that will have very strongly apply themselves right and like now like it's like a whole different mistake that like you have to think about like how to yeah. fix properly right because it's like a oh all these other things that could have grown that like as in the app or, or like them being like dissatisfied with like what they're working on and things like that right um and like just like consistently like spending a lot of time like thinking about this right like it's like critical i think uh and I guess for me, there is, it ends up now looking like so many different branches to think about. We are, mm. okay, product on each of these things, like hiring, right, um, team retention, people satisfaction, fundraising, regulation, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it's, it's like super stressful. <laughs> um, but it's like, it, it's like, there's like this Russo code of like we don't want change but like we want the change we put on ourselves <laughs> yeah so i guess that's that amazing so with all of this these challenges and all of these amazing products and just you know changing the world with crypto what would you say has been the two biggest lessons that you've learned being co-founder of by current hmm what would be the two biggest lessons yeah a lot of lessons um so i think so, so so specifically to bike coins actually mm-hmm. right is one is like i guess like when we're pre-thinking like the risks u.s regulation is actually like a really big risk that isn't always very intuitive right yeah. so because like a lot of crypto infra is built around like u.s software engineering mm-hmm. and like increasingly like silicon valley right like that begins to like affect us a lot right because when we want to like say do partnerships or like uh get vcs right and things along those lines or interface with like the u.s banking system right mm-hmm. we start eating like all sorts oh, of like really right. weird bottlenecks yeah like the, the so so there, there are no banks in the u.s there are no banks in the u.s that support crypto companies except like maybe some five to eight companies right um and like there, we there was a point in 2019 2018 2019 yeah where we 20 both 2018 and 2019 where we wanted to have a bank account with like these companies and like none of them would have wow. us right um and like because like for them like their compliance is like oh the intersection of like risk as a crypto company and like risk as like a nigerian <laughs> it's too yes. much. yeah exactly right and so like the interesting thing for us is like we're like oh we are resilient right so like all these eight banks right like we apply to every yeah. single one of them and then all of them said no and then two months later we applied to every single one of them and, like we applied to each of them like three different times and they all said no each time right and like each time like you learn something new about the process yeah. and you're like oh yeah i figured it out i'll fix and it then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and then you go yeah. yeah um and like there's sort of like a, a bunch of ways to like think about like solving problems like that right that weren't like entirely like intuitive to us at that point in time right um so like that for instance is like just like a, a big lesson mm. where it's like a oh um th- there are i guess almost like second order risks that actually like exist right where initially like your first set of risks is like oh competition and oh maybe like there's regulation and oh or maybe like team dynamics and whatnot right um but like the second order effect is sort of something like say oh i'm a crypto company and like i'm an african startup and um there's regulation but like it's not regulation just like that exists with my 
primary market is regulation that exists with the partners that I have to try to integrate with, mm. right? Um, so so that as an example, like I would say, is like being like a, a big like risk yeah, thing and like yeah. a big challenge. Yeah. Oh, but let me say, what would sort of be the second biggest challenge? Uh, lesson. With, uh, oh, second big. Okay, second biggest lesson. Mm, okay, let, let, let me articulate that as like a lesson. Um, uh, so okay, okay. I I think the, a very important lesson for us has actually been. I, uh, so, so like, picking the right team, right? So, so one of the things we are very, like, non hesitant to do as, like, a team is when we think, like, things don't align with, like, people we hire, right? yeah. like, we, we are very quickly to, like, communicate that to with them and, like, figure out how to, like, purchase, right? Yeah. Um, and, like, that's, like, super big for us, right? Yeah. Um, so the, the couple of things around that, number one is, like, finding, like, people that align with us is, like, just very important, important right yeah, yeah. and it's like we need to be able to like trust that people will go execute right um but then there, there are all sorts of effects that come from not having like people who are strongly aligned with like what you're doing and right. like bringing in their best every day right number one is it's very frustrating for other people like now they have to like cover the slack of those people right yeah. um number two is like it's very frustrating for them because it's like oh if somebody can get to it like now okay like yeah, yeah. why am i putting in so much effort right um and three is like things like sleep through the cracks right and like when you're like now fast moving right and like building so many things like the consequence of like things like that is even more disastrous right so so i, I think like that's actually been like a, a very very key thing mm. right and like you end up having like people who like your first bunch of ideas right because they strongly align with like the culture and strongly understand like what's going on can significantly influence like everybody else that's right or right. um, like increasingly like we are now at a point where there are a lot of people on the team that i can trust that like if they hire somebody right they would do as good of a job or better as of a job as I would do, right? Yeah. And like, like something I crack a joke with like somebody, uh, one of my coworkers once, and they had hired somebody, and I was like, oh, I need to talk to them and I see if I would like them, right? And they're like, don't worry, you will like them, <laughs> <laughs> like, and like they weren't like asking me or like suggesting that I would like them. They were like, oh, don't worry, like I am a hundred percent certain, like in that kind of sense. And like that, like that level of confidence and like level of alignment is like just super critical, right? Because again as you begin to grow, right, like, there are so many things that is very, very easy to miss, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there isn't one person who can catch it, yeah. there are three people who can catch it. And, like, you need people that you trust and, like, you can Dedicate literally, like, transfer this responsibility right. to and, like, they will execute on it at the level at which, like, you would, right? Um, and, like, uh, yeah, and so, like, a lot of times, like, there's something, like, Bezos sort of says, right, which is, like, when he, yeah, yes, he looks for people that are exceptional in at least, like, one dimension, right? And I think for me, like, very much so, like, looking for people who are, like, exceptional in a certain dimension or, like, people, one of these of our is, like, people who I, I, I would be impressed to work with, right? Like, I find it impressive. I know mm -hmm. that I'm working with these people, right? Like, it's like just like super important because like there's so much to learn from them, right? And like, there's so much responsibility that they can take a hold of. Um, and like, with things like that, like you can just like continue growing. That makes sense. Yeah. So if we step away from Bycoins for a bit, um, I did this part, I forgot how to pronounce it again. Aleph. Aleph. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay, so if we step away from Bycoins, I will go to what you're personally doing with mm -hmm. Aleph Fellowship and a Warrior Fund or a Warrior Fund. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to like, tell us about it? I mean, when you started talking about um, how you got scholarship to study in the US and how um, for you, you understand that scholarship or things like that are very important to sort of like take people from point A to like a point B thing. So it, I'm like, oh, that's probably why he started this. But like in your own words and like what you're trying to do, if you can explain a bit more about both of them. Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, so, so I think, um, I guess maybe like setting a bit of context, right? Like, so I think one of the things I describe as like, the things I care about the most on like the planet is what I describe as human flourishing, right? Mm -hmm. So I sort of like want a planet where like a whole bunch, like there's a set of things that happen a lot more, right? So okay. um, a planet where um, there's a lot more of more, more of love, right? And like a lot more sacrifice, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know That's it's so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but, but like, like, and like a planet where like there isn't like cancer, right? And like a planet where there is like the iPhone and things like that, and like have VR experiences and AR experiences and like AI and things along those lines, right? Or um, my like, yeah, like I like we go to like Mars, right? Like I'm very like <laughs> future excited, right? And like I want like expectancy to be like 200 or 500, right? Like depending <laughs> on how far we can push it. Um, and like I sort of think of the gap between like I sort of think of the set of problems that exist between like where we are today, right? Oh, and like oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I spend a lot of time thinking about like okay, one, how do I best apply? Um, my time and like my resources and my energy, right? And like fixing this, right? Um, and for me, right, I think there is, 
just like a ridiculous amount of like neurons that exist in Nigeria and on the African continent that are very strongly underapplied, right? Um, and like when we say things like, oh, like there is no Nigerian who has had like a Nobel Prize in physics or medicine, right? Like there's just like a, like it's just like preposterous, <laughs> right? Um, and I think sort of the route around like fixing some of that is one, importantly, like we do have the internet, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like curating the kind of opportunities and experiences, right? For like people to like aggressively apply themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And like sort of like over apply themselves, if, if you may. Um, and I think the, there are a bunch of scenarios, there are a bunch of things that like are barriers between like where we are as a society and like getting to that point, right? And a big thing around that is the current state of like the university system, right? Where, um, and like even to a certain degree, like the secondary school system, where people aren't encouraged to be curious, right? And like aren't encouraged to ask questions and things along those lines. Um, and for me, it's like, okay, how do we figure out a thing that I can start at a small level, right? And like, hopefully, like, scale up significantly, um, such that all of the people that sort of like exist right now, um, are not encumbered by like that challenge, right? right? Um, and are able to like reach for the, the stars, right? And like, this, this actually started, so like, this was one of the things like I've always like very strongly thought about like wanting to do. Um, but I was, so I had the research assistant role like open recently. Mm -hmm. So like, my research assistant role, generally speaking, is like a role that, like I, like custom craft an application. And, like in my head is like, I'm looking for someone like me, <laughs> kind of thing, yeah. And I'm like, oh, like someone like me, like from like maybe five years ago, right? And like, I want them to like significantly grow, right? Mm -hmm. And like, there's somebody who applied for the role, right? And then we, we didn't, I didn't get back to them on time, but like, I didn't want, I didn't say like, they, they had a really good application, but yeah. like, there were a bunch of people who were better. Um, and then like, they DM me and like, we're talking, uh, and then they explained, they, they, they said something like, uh, I, I, I think they were talking, they were talking about like, I was asking them how they're interested in crypto. And then they said, oh, like they're super excited about things that like abstract the complexity of crypto and like build great user experiences. And like, they were talking like very reasonably and yeah. very sharply. Uh, and then they said, oh, very recently they got their parents to buy like the Bitcoin for them and they sold it and like they celebrated their birthday. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, what do you mean like you got your parents, right? And then I realized like the person was a 17 year old, mm. right? And like she was a 17 year old girl who lived in Portacot, right? Wow. Yeah, exactly, right? And like she like was talking about Bitcoin in a very educated sense, right? Mm. And I like, was talking about like reading the white paper and be very interested in the space and whatnot, right? Um, and for me it's like, the, the like the Nigerian <laughs> the Nigerian university system is the worst place you want to throw that kind of mind, mm. <laughs> right? Um, and like so like it became a, even a lot more urgent in my head, right? Uh, so so I guess like that's sort of like been like the starting thing um through the journey where um at this point is now like okay like how would we start little by little getting people who are like this, right? Who have already shown like a demonstration for being very curious, right? And like against all the obstacles they've sort of like driven themselves, um and now they're at the point where like they arrive at that cost but like what you want to do is nurture that a bit yeah. more and like encourage it in like some of that direction right so that what we end up having is that there is a reality where the next satoshi is a nigerian right yeah. um r rather than like a reality where like they're in a union system and like some lecturers are harassing them or like <laughs> something like that right yeah. exactly so so i guess like that's the starting journey um for me like right now it's like a, okay like a small group of like say 10 folks or something like that and then like increasingly like scaling it up right and i think again we, we are increasingly in a world where the internet significantly helps us learn so much right yeah. and like we, we are gradually at a point where like even you can see like some of the software engineers in the world are like world class and things along those lines right um and like what you sort of want to do right or is to be able to get to a point where like we can scale that across the country and across the continent where like almost regardless of like where you're born you have a real chance at like getting to that point so you might like that's sort of like the cheesy like <laughs> goal, right um and like part of the reason why we're like also making it paid is to sort of remove like the financial okay. restriction around it right i think like I'm, I'm a big fan of like things like basic income right and i think we sort of should have a planet where like people don't have to worry about like what they eat and where they sleep so that like we can really figure out like what's in people's minds right um and like that way like we would have a lot more people like solving like medicine problems and have a lot of people solving like software problems and a lot more people solving physics problems and like we can actually like go to mass or something <laughs> yeah so that's interesting you talk about your business a lot you probably mentioned him 
like three or four times. Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> so obviously he's one of the people that inspire you. But what mm. are the two or three people that really inspire mm. you? Yeah, yeah. So so it, it does depend. Like there there are a bunch of people like across like different like philosophies, I suppose. Um, I would sort of say like Zuck actually like does like inspire me in a certain degree, right? Um, MLK does inspire me in a certain degree. Um, somewhat like. Not, not very directly related to business, right? There's people like Maya Angelou and Belux, like they also like do strong inspire me. Um, what is the what's the common trend around these people? Um, there, there are two or three things, right? Um, so so one is, I guess like I'm a sucker for people who are able to use words to articulate like thoughts very effectively. Right. right. Um, and like, there's something like you see with like Bezos, you see with MLK, you see with Churchill, you see with Bear Looks, like people like that. Where, like, when you read them, it's almost like the, the instances where you read them, especially when you agree with them, right? Where it's like, it feels like they took the words out of your head and like mm. expressed it in like a way in which, like, even on your most intelligent day, you would never have been able to, right? And like, it just like reaches very strongly into your consciousness, right? Even like, I think Balaji like does very well with like talking about some things like that. And like, I think articulation is useful because. Like again, sort of from an anthropological lens, sorry, like a significant reason why we progress as a society is we're able to communicate. And like we're able mm -hmm. to communicate in a way in which like this imagery that I have in my head, I can represent it to you, right? And like you can take lessons from it and like you can digest it and move forward, right? Um and like in that sense, like people who articulate very strongly, right? And like create almost like a spiritual experience for us, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know, like they end up like creating like a, a, a much stronger world for us right like there is like a, a clearer vision that they're able to like guide us towards right and like even like people like musk right you, you, maybe not you might not necessarily be intuitive that like that's what happens right? but when musk talks about like his vision of the world right like you get very inspired because it's like hey, oh like we're going to mass and like it sounds like we're going to mass in like four decades or something <laughs> right yeah, yeah um so so i like I, I do really like that right i like people who obviously like engage very critically with like material right so whether or not like i disagree with them right so like i disagree with max from now to forever <laughs> but i think like max is an excellent articulator right and like you sort of like challenges us to like actually like create a better world, right? Um, so just like things, things along those lines, I think is like the the common thread. Yeah. Outside yeah. of tech, yeah, buy coins, yeah, um, the fellowship, the fund. Outside of work and yeah. saving the planet, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's Tommy Wa? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, let, let 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 me think about it. Yeah, so 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 I guess like I could talk about like some of the things I do like when I'm not like spending all of my time thinking, thinking about. Thinking <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So so I, I like playing, playing board games, for instance. Um, yeah, I, I like play, yeah I do like playing board games. So so we used to do. Were you trying to convince yourself just now? No 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 no. no. <laughs> so so I, I wanted to give like an example, but I realized like it would sound too much at the intersection of like where we are moving <laughs> away from. Um, but, but um, so so at Bikers, we used to do a thing like every Friday where we were like chill and like play board games and like people would drink and whatnot. So so yeah, like I I, I so do like, like that. Board yeah, games. I, I really like playing board games. So um, I, I like talking about like. Um, religion and like philosophy like quite a bit yeah um that, that gets like very interesting for me um what else, what else do i like to do um I, I actually like hanging out with friends um uh to especially to the extent that it's like in a controlled setting and it's not like you're stuck <laughs> in an elevator for <laughs> for three months yeah um but but yeah i think like th those would be some of the things that i say like describe me outside of um backgrounds and saving the planet <laughs> amazing um and this then this is my final question mm -hmm. what would you say is the mantra or fundamental life principles that you are building your existence upon? Mm, um, that's a good question. Um, so I think that, so interestingly, right, like I think I am most influenced like probably I'm most influenced by like Jesus and Paul actually, right? Um, and like like it, it, it does get cheesy, right? But um, I do think that there is like there's sort of like a gap between like where we are today and like where we should be as like a society, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think like there is a whole bunch of things that. Like, there's a whole bunch of ways in which, like, we should be more strongly applying ourselves as, like, members of society, right? Especially when we have, like, a little bit, pri a little privilege that, like, we aren't doing, like, well enough, right? And, like, you end up, like, like the expression of all of that is, like, a whole bunch of things that demonstrate, like, the discontent that, like, people end up having, right? And so for me, right, like, it's sort of describing that as, like, human flourishing, right? Whereas, like, a, okay, there is this progressivism across, like, a bunch of dimensions that is just very clear that, like, we should be having, right? And, like, um, there's this guy, Steven Pinker, who wrote his book, a better, um, 
uh, better angels of our nature or something, right? Mm. And like he tries to explain like, oh, like the fact that as a society, like we've been progressing, right? And like when you think about like the things that he's mentioning, like it makes sense, like, oh, number, um, percentage of people in slavery, right? Percentage of people below the poverty line, right? Like things along those lines. Um, I like those are things like we want to aggressively like reduce as a society, right? Like I want to increase life expectancy and we want to like, like one of the things I really care about is that one day, like I describe like my utopic dystopia, <laughs> which is sort of like one day, uh, we don't like, we, like it's not like silly that like as like humans like we have to like carry pregnancies or whatnot. Right? Like, we should have like incubators, <laughs> <laughs> and, like completely like outsource the problem. Right? Like like it does like make a lot of sense, right? And like um obviously like, for people who still want to have it, like they can like have the experience, True. right? Yeah, exactly. Like but like we should always have optionality, right? Um, and like we should always like be unencumbered and un unencumbered by like the restrictions and limitations that just like exist right and like we think about like the fact that one day somebody decided that oh, i'm going to get a hot air balloon and hold on to it and like fly right and like all of a sudden we have planes right or like we need to like be able to like dream big as a society right and like we need to be able to aggressively like apply ourselves across like all sorts of dimensions um but like we need to do all of that and like create like a very fair world that we are like everybody has access to stuff like that right um so i think like in my day it's like a bit of rambling right but <laughs> <laughs> because i'm trying to not sound too cheesy <laughs> but but like you might like that's sort of like how i would describe um like the vision of Question, a society right? that you want yeah. have you always had this has this always been you thinking futuristic mm. thinking of solving problems and saving the planet of you know just is it okay it sounds... stop saying saving the planet. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like it's fine like once as a joke <laughs> okay, okay okay but like okay solving problems and mm. just like making lives better like mm. fundamentally changing the things that you met here mm. has it always been you or did you get to a point where you sort of just gathered experiences and now you are seeing what the knowledge that you have in engineering mm. and the little knowledge of what you have in crypto can do and you're just like oh i can replicate this mm, makes sense yeah so so i think like it's it's sort of like three phases right so so i think like as a young person right like as a teenager i probably wasn't like thinking too deeply or at least i wouldn't have had the words to articulate it in this way right uh, so but, like the, the translation would have been something close to like a oh like it sort of sucks that like there are people below the poverty line that existed that exist like on the planet right um or, and it sort of sucks that like people are nice to each other right and things like that so like i would have said like we should be kinder and more loving on the planet right um but over time it's sort of like at least i have read like a lot more people have like given me the words to articulate mm. it more and like think about it a lot more right so i think like that's sort of like being like a transition through the line and then like there's sort of like the intersection with like tech and like the tech influence and seeing like what tech has done and what tech can do right and then like there's sort of like the futurism aspect which is like a oh there are just like set of like three or four things i think are going to be like super critical that like we need to like spend a lot of time as like a yeah, people like continually applying ourselves towards right um so I, I guess like that's sort of how i would like think yeah. about um, and that makes how, sense how that and i asked because i mean people can hear you talk now and say and assume that oh all of this mm. vision that you have is from a place of privilege mm. that you've mm. got mm. into mm. because oh there's a bit of comfort and you know what you're doing with your life mm. quote unquote, and so it's easier to think mm -hmm. but i i wanted to know because it's I think the one thing that I am I'm, I'm getting or I'm learning as you talk is just that sense of vision and purpose that is bigger than you mm -hmm. that is not necessarily tied to the work that we're doing and it's not necessarily mm -hmm. tied to the code mm -hmm. that you write mm -hmm. but it's just more of I think that this can be better mm -hmm. and it's abstract mm -hmm. right and I would I can dedicate some time right or some weeks or some days or some hours to just actively think about it mm -hmm. and if I then can do something about it mm -hmm. i'll sort of apply it to myself yeah yeah yeah. i think that's a yeah, pretty pretty good articulation yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I, I like that yeah, yeah and that's and that's that's very inspiring right mm -hmm. because beyond i mean i know you from twitter by coins mm -hmm. but it's interesting to hear the level of thought that you think that you give to things that are abstract mm -hmm. basically right mm -hmm. i'm just thinking about oh i mean I, I i i understand when people say I mean, I've, I've had opportunities that have taken me, that's taken me to places mm -hmm. that if I didn't apply myself and get those things, I won't be where I am today. Makes so sense. I know that it makes sense to replicate those mm -hmm. things, right? Um, there are things that I can think about now that I, I know that those, the threads were there as a kid, mm -hmm. but it was just yeah, there, yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's very impressive to now hear someone like, I'm actually giving it thought. Mm -hmm. And it makes me sort of pose, want to pose the question to people of like, beyond like the day-to-day -day hustling that we do and mm -hmm. we're 
because at the end they want to make money, right? Mm -hmm. And money will solve a lot of these problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But beyond like the the day to day of like trying to build a company or trying to build a career, mm -hmm. that sense of purpose is really impact? important mm -hmm. to just like yeah, yeah. sort of ground yourself mm -hmm. and think about what you can do to just impact the world, like mm -hmm. beyond of the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's that's it's super important. Yeah, I, 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 I sort of actually like money as like an artificial abstraction of like productivity right and like utility and like uh, uh, we're actually talking about this at work today right i was explaining that i think in, with certain things we get it very, pretty accurately right where like a lot of people sort of why the middle class like the translation of like productivity level and like work makes sense right yeah. but like a lot of times like we, we really suck at it right like, a good example is like teachers right like where teachers have like so much productivity and like utility to society but like we pay them like trash right yeah, yeah. um and so like it's very important sometimes to like take a step back at looking at things outside of that abstraction layer and more so in like a like what is productivity what is utility like what is impact right like how, how much closer are we to a world where like we can teleport <laughs> <laughs> it's flying <laughs> that, that one like i think i'm just selfish i just it's flying <laughs> yeah but, but 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 yeah um that, I, I i think that's what i think also of that that's amazing and if i would just take it back because like it's one's connected with, we're actually talking about like work stuff um i think the one that's saying that i would sort of pick from the way you guys are building bitcoins mm -hmm. is the speed. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. when people start startups, they probably will read like really awesome books and they'll hear about speed and iteration. But we, we think about those in terms of like that one specific problem and that one specific product. But your team is sort of redefining and say, hey, there's, there's more or less a large, there's a vision mm -hmm. and there's so many ways that we can solve it and so many things that we can plug into. And as much as our minds and our code can carry us, we would iterate really fast and build all of those things. And that's really important because I assume there are a lot of people who see you guys, like today where you're announcing this one, next day, or seeing coming so far around. And every, all of us are like, are you the only people that are innovating in this ecosystem? But it's, I, I, I imagine that people who watch this video and actually think that, oh, we're still a small thing, but maybe we can actually think about the things that we can integrate fast mm -hmm. based on the infrastructure yeah, yeah, yeah. that we already really mm -hmm. have. And I think that yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And I guess like just the thing to mention there is like, a, like I, I don't want to make it sound too like naive, right? But there is like there are very real tangible challenges and like very real mistakes like <laughs> like I, like i think i like the mistakes i make sometimes they, like too much of the time like you are crazy you know what I'm <laughs> right but but like and like it, it does make sense um you we sort of don't like do anything new if we don't like make mistakes right and like it's like plunging ourselves into the unknown, right? And like, it does make a lot of sense that like we make mistakes. And like, sometimes like, it sucks, like the mistakes are like incredibly costly, but like sometimes we're lucky and like the mistakes are like minuscule and like we can sort of like fix them and like make sure like it doesn't happen again, right? Um, But but yeah, and like there is no, yeah, I guess I, I, I'm hoping like that's something like people can like tap into it. It's like, there isn't any of us on the team that even feels like we, like, we have it all figured out, like mm. the clear, like roadmap to like what we want to execute. It's like, okay, we have like a vague vision of like the future, but um, it's by like trying things that we're like, okay, like this makes sense, right? And like with some things that like, we make like very, very bad silly mistakes. <laughs> yeah, like both like as a team and like individually. Yeah, but, but, but yeah. Amazing, I think that's a really good way to end it. Just try things yeah basically yeah, yes, like yeah, if, yeah. If, there's, if there's an idea if there's a problem basically try it and, and think a lot too because i think tommy what thinks a lot <laughs> <laughs> and just like things and dreams so so two things i will end the video with try things like just basically apply yourself and whatever skill that you already have but also think a lot <laughs> thank you yeah. amazing thank you so much guys for watching this video to the end Thank you for Thank having you for this having conversation me. with yeah, me. This was fun. Yeah, yeah. same here. It was, it was actually yeah. really fun. You're, you're a great questioner. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Make sure you don't leave this channel without subscribing. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.